it seemed like in 2020 and 2021 that most of America <laughs> went out and bought a gun. That is a lot of new gun owners. Millions and millions of new gun owners. And oftentimes people go out and they just pick up a gun, they bring it home, and there's a lot of things that should be considered that aren't considered when it comes to making mistakes as a new carrier of a firearm. So what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the 10 biggest mistakes concealed carriers make. Number one, not enough training. You need a lot of training. You need to practice, practice, practice. But more than that, it's not just going to the range with some friends. It's about taking classes. It's about learning things from experts and, and beyond YouTube. And, an example I gave in the past is uh, in Missouri there was a point where they passed a law where depending on what age you were you had to take a hunting course if you wanted to hunt in Missouri and uh, so as a veteran hunter I unfortunately had to go take this class and it was an eight hour day uh, one day class and I dreaded it I learned so much in that class I even though I had been hunting dozens of times prior to there and received all sorts of expert advice from other people. I learned so much in that class. And every class I've ever taken since then, I've just learned an abundance. So training and not just getting out and shooting with friends. Take some classes. Number two, understanding federal, state, and local laws. Depending on where you are in this country, there's probably several weird, strange, anti-Second Amendment laws being placed on you depending on where you are in the country as far as what state you're in, which county are you in, which city are you in. And an example of that is you take Pennsylvania, which has very uh, open, free Second Amendment laws, and people really enjoy their Second Amendment rights in Pennsylvania. But if you go to Philadelphia, you're going to be in a lot of trouble if you don't follow their laws. And that's kind of what I'm getting at, is make sure you know the federal, state, and local laws. Number three, get a good holster and get a good belt. If you're carrying a gun, you need a good holster. I'm amazed at how many people I see with cheap holsters you know and there's this interesting phenomenon that criminals for some reason don't even use holsters <laughs> they stick it in their pants or in their pockets i mean goodness gracious people don't do that get a good holster and if for some reason you get a holster and you don't like it get a different one most of the holsters i've bought over the years i don't use i've only i've kind of narrowed it down to just a few that i that i then use forever so get a good holster if you don't get a good one the first time second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth time just keep going until you get a good holster number four educate those in your household you know this is also a big mistake you know oftentimes like the man of the household will decide they're going to get a gun and he'll go out and he'll get a gun and he won't tell anybody about the gun he won't train anybody on that gun won't teach anybody anything safe about that gun you need to educate your family on the safety of guns they need to understand and respect that firearm and i've said this many times in the past is uh, specifically the youth they don't have a respect for the firearm but when you see people who are raised by parents who did teach them to respect the firearm, they respect the firearm. It's not that complicated. And if, God forbid, somebody in that household stumbles across that gun and they don't understand it, you're going to wish you had educated everybody in that household, regardless of their age, whether they're roommates, spouse, whatever. Number five, constantly checking and adjusting your gun when you're out in public. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. I'm guilty of that too. It's hard not to do. You just, for whatever reason, you want to check, you want to make sure it's there or that it's concealed, whatever it is, just leave it alone. When you touch it, you draw attention to it. And, and that's really kind of the idea of concealed carry. You don't want to draw any attention to your firearm. Number six, awareness. Awareness of everybody around you. You know, when you're carrying a gun, you have a responsibility in the public that, that you have taken on yourself. 
And part of that is being constantly aware. You know, oftentimes we wander this earth and we're just kind of in a daydream and we're not paying attention. If you're carrying a gun, make sure you are constantly in a state of awareness, especially if you're, you know, I'm not a fan of open carry, but if you're open carrying, you better be aware. If people can see your gun, be aware of who's around you, beside you, near you, within arm reach of you. Just be aware. Once you put that gun on your hip, you have to open up a whole new level of awareness that you never had before. Just be ready for it. Number seven. No indexing. I mean, people will, if they're holding onto their gun, they probably got their finger on the trigger. Uh, that is foolish. Indexing is just essentially taking your, your trigger finger and you just take it off the trigger and you put it on the side of the gun instead. That way it's not even in that, within the tri trigger guard. Just keep it away from the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And it's a practice that, that you need to get in the habit of doing, whether you're clearing your house because you think somebody might be there, whether you're at the range, whether you're hunting, whatever it may be, don't touch the trigger until you're ready to squeeze it. And the best way to do that is just get in the habit of indexing. Number eight, safety checking your firearm. Safety checking your firearm is something that a lot of people neglect to do. Oftentimes people will pull the magazine out and unfortunately there's still a live round in there and you believe it or not, this is a common mistake that people make. Um, I knew of a young lady who lost her life because of that. Um, I have a friend who shot himself in the hand because of that. It's a very common thing, just if you are putting that firearm away and you're, you're taking it out of the ready position essentially where it's armed locked and loaded you're taking it out of that condition safety check it the magazine's out slide is back locked back look in there touch reach in there with your finger if you have to just make sure uh, before that firearm is mentally considered safe you safety check it number nine Pointing it in a safe direction. I mean, goodness gracious. Uh, I, I hate to say that, but, you know, oftentimes when people are, you know, this drives me crazy. When people show me their guns and, and they're, they're kind of just pointing it everywhere. It, it, you need to be aware that regardless of the situation, the barrel of that gun should never be pointing at anything you're not prepared to destroy or kill ever, uh, regardless of whether you've safety checked it, regardless of what uh, condition you think it might be in, regardless of whether you're showing it something, whatever, there's safe directions. And typically the safest direction is the ground. Just keep it away from people and in a safe direction 100% of the time. Finally, number 10, storage. You know, people make a mistake of buying a firearm and not buying a safe place to store it like a gun safe. You must keep your firearm locked away at all times that it is not on your person. Your firearm should either be locked in a safe or on your hip. Nowhere in between at no other place. It should be either be, well, I guess included in your hands. It should either be in your hand in a holster or in a safe. It should never be anywhere else. God forbid if you have children around the house, don't be foolish. Just go get a safe. Go buy a safe. I mean, you can go up to anywhere. <laughs> Walmart, Fast Pro, just go get a safe. Even if you buy a handgun, just get a little handgun safe. It's not that complicated. Go get a safe. If you don't own a safe, I recommend you stop the video now and you go buy a safe. Uh, it's ridiculous not to have a safe. So uh, there you go. There's my top 10 list of the biggest, most dangerous mistakes that um, gun owners, not just new gun owners, but veteran gun owners will commonly make. And, and you know, honestly, some of these I've made myself. Uh, some of this list I came up with my own or just having friends share horror stories of making these mistakes. So I uh, hope this video helps. If you have any comments on it, put them below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Thank you.